Hey everybody, this is Mobala12 here to help quench that knowledge thirst. Um, before I get started into get started with this video, I want to give you guys a heads up again. Uh, definitely check out my Facebook fan page. Link is in the description box below. Also, if you guys have seen the update, um, I talked about this new series. Um, if you guys like it, definitely make some comments on that video or on the fan page and give me some suggestions. Um, whether or not you like it or you don't like it some other ideas okay so again uh, link to the fan page is in the description box below and also shoot me some ideas in regards to that new series alright and that's the quick little update I wanted to give in regards to this video I'll be specifically talking about synthesizing carboxylic acids this will be the perfect segue uh, for the next series of videos which will be on acid derivatives Okay, so again, we're we're going to be focusing on synthesizing carboxylic acids. What are the different ways? For this video, I have five ways that I'll be showing you how to do it. There are many other ways that you can do it as well. Uh, let's see. Um, is there anything else before we get into it? Um, I think that's pretty much it. So let's get let's dive into it right away. So the first way we have up top is oxidation of alcohols. Okay. So, what do I mean by oxidation of alcohols? Um, what type of alcohols am I talking about? Specifically for this reaction above, with this specific set of reagents, CrO3 and H2SO4, you need a primary alcohol, okay? And that's what we have here. So let me make a note of that. You need a primary OH, okay? So primary alcohol okay, is key, is significant. If you have a secondary alcohol, this will not work. Instead of forming a carboxylic acid, you'll form a ketone with a secondary alcohol. So again, primary alcohol is key for this specific set of reagents, okay? So, all you have to do, okay, again, you're going to form a carboxylic acid in this case. All you have to do is form a carbonyl at the carbon where the OH is attached. So your product will look something like this. So it will be okay. Uh, let me just flip this up. It will be as such. There's your OH. That's the same starting material. We're gonna draw the same starting material, and all we're gonna do to make our carboxylic acid is attach a carbonyl group, a double bonded O, right there. And there we have. And there you have it. And that's it for this reaction. Again, all of these, most of these reactions I've talked about in previous videos. So, um, if this is going too fast for you, okay, this is just like a review before we go into the next series of videos. If this is going too fast for you, um, check out those videos. Um, I think one of them is ox oxidation of alcohols. That's one of the names. Um, the other ones, uh, I can't, I can't recall right now. But I'll try to put some links or something like that. We'll see. So again, for the first reaction we're discussing, oxidation of alcohols, you need a primary alcohol with this set of reagents, CrO3, H2SO4, and you get your carboxylic acid. Again, the way you draw it is all you have to do is draw your starting material, like I did here, and add a double bonded O to that carbon where the OH is attached. Okay, so that's the first one. So let's make a little check that we talked about that. Um, the second rea reaction is the oxidation of aldehydes. Okay, so you see I have these two sets of reagents. Um, if you have an aldehyde, it could be any type of aldehyde. Okay, you have CrO3 and H2SO4. That's the same reagent we have up top. Or you can have Ag2, silver uh, oxide, ammonia, and water. So any one of these reagents would work and you'll get a carboxylic acid again. All you have to do is draw, to draw your carboxylic acid is replace that H with an OH. So it will look something like this. And there you have it. That's the answer. So again, you can use this set of reagents or this set of reagents to get this product. It's a very simple way of drawing this product. All you have to do is replace that H with an OH, and that's what we did here. So that's the second reaction. Okay. Um, the third reaction, and let me just uh, zoom out a little bit. Okay, there you go. The third reaction is the oxidation of alkyl groups on aromatics. 
okay, on aromatic ring. So here we have an aromatic ring, right? Benzene with an alkyl group hanging off of it. It's an ethyl group hanging off of it. Now this reagent should be familiar because I did a video. I think it was called the reactions of aromatic rings or something like that. I made a video where I discussed this reagent. This KMnO4 H plus in heat will oxidize the alkyl group into a carboxylic acid. Okay. Regardless of how long this alkyl group can alkyl group is, it could be 10 carbons long, it could be 15 carbons long, it could be a million carbons long, regardless of how long it is, you're going to form the same carboxylic acid. That's what's so convenient about this reaction. But there's a catch, okay, to this reaction. If you recall, at the carbon that's directly attached to the aromatic ring, so here's that carbon, we'll put a little asterisk right there, okay, to the, at the carbon that's directly attached to the aromatic ring there has to be at least one H okay in this case we have two H's okay in this case we have two H's there has to be at least one H in order for this reaction to work if there's not one H the reaction not work so let me zoom in a little bit on this uh, bottom half of the um, of the board so you guys can see okay so again you need at least one H for this reaction to work if there's not an H the reaction doesn't work so a tert butyl group at this position will not be oxidized so in order to draw this product you draw your aromatic ring again right and all you have to do is draw a very basic looking carboxylic acid and this piece right here is going to be the same for any okay so all you have to do is draw a carbonyl at that carbon that I've drawn with the asterisk um, put a carbonyl there so, so a double bonded O and put an OH okay so regardless again I could have made this I could extend the ring the chain like that and it would have been the same product I could have extended the chain like this and it would have been the same product I could have put an aromatic ring, again, a phenyl group hanging off of this somewhere. You get the same product. So that's the convenience of this reaction because you'll form the same uh, carboxylic acid group here. Okay, it's always going to be looking like this. Okay, so that's the oxidation of alkyl groups with, with aromatics. Now the next one is the Grignard reaction with CO2. Okay, so the Grignard reagent reacting with CO2. Okay. Um, in this case, you form a carboxylic acid again. Now, here's the catch. Again, this is another interesting little thing you need to pay attention to. Just like the previous reaction where you have to have at least one H on the carbon directly attached to the aromatic ring, in this case you have to realize that the Grignard reagent is going to add into the CO2. Okay, I'm going to go through the reaction mechanism. Um, but it's very sim it's very similar to the Grignard reaction mechanism I've showed you in my video called the Grignard reaction. Okay, it's very similar. So the this Grignard reagent adds into the carbon of that CO of that CO um, region, and then it does what it has to do. So in order to draw this product, what I would do, actually before I get into that, I need you to realize that CO2 is composed of one carbon, right? That makes sense. Clearly you see CO2. Now there's an importance to that because the fact that CO2 has a carbon is going to extend this chain by one carbon as well. So your product is not going to be a two, it's not going only going to contain two carbons due to the Grignard reagent. It's also going to contain another carbon due to the CO2. So in order to draw your product what I would do is this draw your the alkyl group from your green reagent so you have a one two carbon chain right from your from your green reagent so one two now add another carbon for the co2 now for that carbon that you just added put a double bonded o and an oh and there you have your product okay so we got a number of this so one two three okay one two three again the reason why we drew a three carbon chain 
instead of a two carbon chain for our product is because the CO2 extends our chain by one carbon. That's the important thing you need to realize. Whenever you react the Grignard reagent with CO2, it's going to extend the chain by one carbon and that's how your carboxylic acid will look. It's not going to look like this. This is not what it's going to look like because we're not taking into account the C from the CO2. It's going to look like this, the three carbon chain and, and the carbonyl with the OH, okay? So that carbonyl is going to be attached to that carbon of that CO2. So that's not it, okay? The final one is a reaction of alkynes, it's ozonolysis of alkynes, okay? Um, what I would do in this case is number the system, okay? So there you have it, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a six carbon type of chain. And ozonolysis. Now if you recall back to the typical ozonolysis things we do, um, usually with an alkene. We usually see ozonolysis with an alkene instead of an alkyne. With an alkene, all we do is split the, so for example, we have an alkene here, right? All we do is split that that carbon-carbon uh, double bond and add a carbonyl to that position and add a carbonyl to that position and we get our products which are two aldehydes, right? Now instead of doing that, the simple way of doing it for alkynes will be again split the triple bond in half and to positions four, so basically you're going to get two fragments now, to positions four add a carbonyl, basically add a double bonded O to position 4 with an OH and to position 5 add a double bonded O with an OH Okay, so what you'll have would be that, so 1, 2, oh, let's scratch, 2, 3, 4 right, and then here's our 5 six and there you have it so that plus that and then and that's all it is for these reactions okay nice uh, overview for how to synthesize carboxylic acids uh, make sure you know all of these reactions this is extremely key for um, for further uh, parts further reactions and stuff like that okay